NATO allies have condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The organization Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg says this is a violation of international law. Ukraine enters a second day under the Russian invasion with over 130 people killed so far. We're joined now to discuss NATO's role by a senior lecturer within the Department of Public Law at the University of Johannesburg, Dr. Mispa Ru. Thank you very much uh, for availing yourself this afternoon. I think perhaps let's start uh, just by asking in terms of your family. We do understand that you've got family in Ukraine. Um, what do you know about, you know, their safety, their condition uh, at this moment? I'm not direct family, if I can just clarify that, but um, a, a very close uh, friends. Um, at the moment, they are trying to flee to Poland. Poland is a NATO state, so I think at the moment that's the majority of people are trying to uh, Ukrainian people are trying to get to uh, Poland as fast as possible. So there's already displacement, already forced movement, and uh, possibly uh, refugees if it continues in this vein. Mm. This is um, something that, the, that Amnesty International rather is also taking a look at and trying to uh, sound the alarm in terms of the number of refugees that will come out of the situation. Maybe just staying uh, with what it is that um, your close friends are telling you as they try to get to Poland, uh, just how easy or difficult is that mission? Um, quite difficult because um, now also what has happened in the past couple of days, there's a major transport areas, for example, bridges, etc., that has been destroyed to try and cripple whichever t um, side of the armed conflict um, there is, uh, the different belligerents, and then also if um, airplanes, etc., travel over the Ukraine, it's just it's too risky. Um, so it's 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 yeah, you know, in cars on foot, um, it's it's quite quite hectic. So there's there's huge panic. People also who cannot uh, leave or taking refuge um, in their underground train systems. Mm. We are getting reports um, that the Russians are moving into uh, Kiev. Where exactly are uh, your people based, uh, at least? In Kiev. Mm. In Kiev. Mm. And they've already, they, um, moments ago, uh, or earlier this morning, they had already, the armed forces, the Russian armed forces had already started um, attacking Kiev. I guess it's a good sign that you're able to speak to them, meaning that the means of communications are still open? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. We invited you on the program to tell us about the role of NATO Jens Stoltenberg, saying they will not send troops to Ukraine for now at least, but that situation could change in the coming days or the coming weeks. Your assessment of their role in the entire uh, conflict? It's crucial. It really is crucial because um, the Ukraine has a number of uh, NATO member states that's neighboring to them who may be of assistance. I, I mentioned Poland already, but also Hungary, Romania, Slovakia. Then there's also states that's not direct neighbors of them that could also play a role, Bulgaria, Czech, uh, the former Czech Republic. So these are all states that um, are member states of NATO. And in terms of the NATO treaty, um, Article 5, an attack against one of the member states of NATO is an attack against all. So it is crucial. The reason why it is so crucial NATO's role is um, because uh, Russia is a permanent member of the Security Council. This is something that they, the only way that other states will be able to intervene militarily is by way of a a binding resolution, a binding decision by the Security Council, which Russia would never allow. Uh, so this uh, NATO is the, is the hope, basically, because also um, a key member of NATO, the United States of America, if you had to weigh up uh, in a power relationship, um, my, my interpretation is that the United States of America, together with NATO members, would be able to um, take a strong stance against Russia. Mm. And Russia has not budged, right? So the threat of sanctions, the threat, no. you know, of completely being shunned out has not done anything to deter them. From, you know, your observation, uh, a number of people coming out from sectors of society to say perhaps they're trying to create a new world order and just show their power against the West. 
I, I hear that exa exactly. It's not, I mean, Russia is the, the biggest country in the world. The, the, it's not about gaining territory. It definitely isn't trying to um, take Ukraine back as, as one of, as part of the Russian territory. It, it's definitely more than that. The speech that uh, President Vladimir Putin gave uh, when he um, revealed basically that Russia will be invading Ukraine, one of the things or a number of um, in, um, examples used to defend and to justify the in, in invasion was a number of attacks by NATO member states throughout the years that, um, as he uh, described it, went uh, together with unaccountability. So not being held accountable for those attacks. So there are a number of issues um, that was raised, and I read an, an in interesting comment. Um, his, it, it's just as well, A murders B, and then he's using that as permission to murder E. So um, it's it's yeah, strange kind of justification that he is using. Mm. He is trying to justify it in terms of public international law, though. And in spite of, you know, um, ordinary Russians taking to the streets, they too have been met uh, with force and getting arrested. I'd like to perhaps go back to just the situation faced by your friends uh, in Ukraine, Kiev, to be specific. Um, you described the situation as very tense and, and filled with fear. I wonder, do they have provisions? Are they able to, you know, move around in Kiev, even though it's not advisable? Do they have enough? You're talking of people going to their basements uh, just to try and keep safe. That's exactly the issue. Uh, a number of suburbs surrounding Kiev has already been evacuated. There's, um, I saw video footage also of apartment blocks that has been destroyed. Yeah. So there's, there's already a, a displacement starting to, uh, to carry on. And there's, um, yeah, so there's also been uh, launches um, by the armed forces there. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's a desperate situation. And although people are trying not to, to panic, uh, it's, it's very difficult not to. So it's, um, yeah, they, they were also um, told in the recent days to keep their passports with them and to try and get as much food and provisions as they are able to. Mm. Setting our thoughts um, to those many that have been impacted by this. Thank you very much for sharing those details with us. Dr. Ms. Baru is Senior Lecturer within the Department of Public Law at the University of Johannesburg.